on one just released photo raw 2023.5 and today what we're going to do is take a look at some of the new features and i'm not going to go into extreme detail on the new features but instead just kind of show you what the initial work looks like with them and then i'll make dedicated videos for each one of the things that i go over today uh, as well as bringing some updates as i learn more about this particular update to on one now what i will say right out the bat is this is a free update for anyone who already owns on one photo raw 2023 you don't have to pay for it all you have to do is download the new update and you're good to go with that being said if you don't own on one then check the link in the description box below and download a 30-day free trial. If you like it, consider using my discount code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 to save some money when you pick it up. Now let's go ahead and dive into today's features. So first up on today's feature list is the curves filter. Now if you caught any of my videos in the past, you will have seen me use the curves filter a few times. I think I'm going to be using it a little bit more. Time will tell. But the new updates to the curves filter start really with this picker tool. What you can do is select anywhere on your photo and click and drag down or up to actually make modifications to that tone range. And notice that it put a point on the curve tone over in the actual filter. This is very similar to what we have in Lightroom. Uh, and this is going to really help us with identifying where we want to modify tones in our photos and make us a little bit more intimate with our photos. The next thing that you'll notice is there's a huge histogram in the background of this tone curve. So as you can see in this particular image, I don't have much information over here on the right side in the whites. So as I pull that closer to the uh, the left side of my tone curve, you can see I'm adding that contrast in. Now, what I just did there was very technical, but the so what to that is we can now see the histogram that we're modifying. And as I make changes on the tone curve here, notice that the histogram also changes with it. So this is a live update as you make changes to your image. I'll go into deeper detail on how that works and how we can use that later on. But uh, the graphical interface here is just really, really phenomenal. The next thing that we have that I'm extremely, extremely excited about is if I right click on the node, I can remove a node except for not the top one. Don't try to remove the top one. The center nodes, if I want to remove a node, I right click on it and then I can remove that control point. The next update is you can get a little bit more fine tuned with how your curve is actually being modified. Uh, if you pay attention to each of those little boxes, you can kind of see where that goes. As I play around with this and understand more about what each of those boxes really, I guess, equate to in increments, I'll bring a new updated video. For now, just know that you have that ability to kind of measure what you're doing if you want to get very precise with your modifications. The next thing on each of the channels, you can see that there's a color overlay. I mentioned this in my overview video before, so this shouldn't come as a surprise, but this is extremely helpful because what you can do is you can look up here and see that if I'm on the red channel, I have red up here. You also have the opposite for the CMYK, uh, which is cyan, and then you have magenta, and then you have yellow. Now that we have these graphical representations, you can see that if I'm on the green channel and I want to bring a little bit of magenta into my highlights, I can just click and drag and bring magenta into my highlights. As I moved this uh, node around, I didn't get any real change to my overall image because there's no highlights in this image really uh, or information where I'm moving this node. However, if I were to come over here, you can see that now I'm really adding in that magenta because I'm in an area where there was information, but then it changes the histogram here because I just modified it. So as I pull this back up, you'll see the histogram move right back out. More to come on 
that. All right. So through the power of editing, here we are with a look on an image. And what I want to do is kind of hone this in and paint it away from my subject. One of the ways that you can do this is by clicking on your mask, hitting the uh, refine mask tool here, and we're going to use the encircling tool. So all I have to do is click and drag around my subject and just perfectly paint him out and then meet the end point again and let it go. On one's going to think for a little while. And what it's going to do is paint him out where the real magic with this comes in, at least for what I do, is using this density slider. I like to pull down on the density slider and that helps me fade in the overall look. So I'm not fully removing the effect from him, but I'm removing it a little bit so that way he stands out and looks a little bit different than the background. That's a technique that I like to use whenever I'm masking. And having this capability with an advanced masking tool is just awesome. Okay, so here we are on another photo that has a pretty high ISO. I shot this in a very dark auditorium at a concert. You can see the noise all over in this particular image. Now, if I were to open up the shadows, and we're just going to take a look in this area right here, which is mostly shadows. It is pretty decently lit, um, but it's mostly shadows. We're going to pull this up and you're going to see that the noise, it starts to shine through, but it doesn't get any more noisy than the rest of the photo. Now, one of the other features that on one 2023.5 brings to the table is a little bit cleaner noise reduction from no noise AI. So we're going to go ahead and test that out right now. I'm going to hit no noise AI and give on one a second to think itself through. And this really does clean up. Let me pull this over so you can see in the brighter area a little bit. This really does clean up that noise. Now for me personally, I have found that on my images, I prefer to move the enhanced detail down just a little bit. Uh, instead of at 50, I like to bring it down 30, 35. And for me, it just cleans up that noise and gives me the look that I'm going for on an image that was already shot at a pretty high ISO. This particular image was shot at 25,600 ISO on the EOS Mark 6, or I'm sorry, EOS R6, uh, which has a pretty decent sensor for low light. It's a 20 megapixel sensor. So, you know, it, it does pretty decent in low light, but this is 100% a usable image. I was able to salvage this before with no noise AI, and now the new raw image processing capability has made this a little bit better. Uh, what you would need it to do, like if you're shooting at these extremely high ISOs like I just was, uh, this is a lifesaver of for the image. All right, so the last thing that I'll cover in this overview is the ability to use the scroll wheel with some keyboard shortcuts to modify a few things. So if you want to zoom in to your image, if you hold down command or control, you can scroll up and you can scroll down and this will allow you to zoom in to your photo. Uh, this zooms to the center of the screen. So then you'd have to hold the space bar to actually move around. And if you hold the shift key down, like while you're zoomed in, if you hold the shift key down and you hit the scroll wheel, you can scroll left and right on the photo here. And we'll hit command zero to bring us back to the center of or fitting it back into the window. And then if you go ahead and hold down the option and command key, you can resize your brush by scrolling up and down on your mouse. Now, if you want to resize the feather, you can hold down option and shift, and then you can scroll up and down on your mouse and resize your feather for your brush. And this is really just a quick way of being able to work on your image while you are on the fly. 
instead of having to use the bracket keys to uh, resize your brush and also some of the other keyboard shortcuts. So I've only gone over a handful of the features that came out in the 2023.5 update for On1. Now, I will be making more videos centered around some of the other updates. So let me know in the comment section below which ones you really, really want to see. And I'll show you how to use them as I get more familiar with them. Go ahead and download that 30 day free trial. Give it a test. See if it works for your flow. And if it does, consider using the discount code FreeWillPhotos20 so you can save some money at checkout. I get a small commission and you get a phenomenal piece of software to edit your photos. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how you're using on one in your workflow down below in the comments. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.